President, ladies and gentlemen, my lovely Durham friends, how nice it is to be back at your decent, proper university, not like those horrible Oxbridge places, which never give me a warm welcome like you do. And long may this remain the case. I don't know whether any of you remember, as I do very vividly, what you were doing on the morning of the 24th of June, 2016. I remember it well because I set my alarm clock early because I had to get to Glastonbury that day and there was a band I wanted to see playing in the morning called Bring Me the Horizon and I didn't want to miss it. <laughs> and I was about to pack stuff into the car and, and zoom off when my wife said to me, we won. And I said, no, I don't believe you. So I got to bed early because the night before, I don't know whether you remember this, but Nigel Farage said on the news at about oh, it was ten or something, he said, I think, I think um, Remain have just edged it. And I thought, well, if Farage thinks that Remain is wrong, then obviously they have. So I went to bed, waking up, uh, waking up the next day expecting to be really miserable. And then my wife gave me the good news, and I felt so, so happy. It was like how it must have felt being an X-Wing fighter pilot just after you'd taken out the Death Star. <laughs> it, was, it was like being Frodo just after you put the ring into Mount Doom. It was like that. Emerging from the Battle of Agincourt. <laughs> Realising that you have actually taken on the, the numerically superior French force with their, their knights and everything, and with the help of your trusty Welsh bowmen uh, and a bit of dirty tactics like slaughtering the French baggage train, you finally defeated the evil power. Um, it was a glorious moment because, and I'm, I'm being absolutely honest here, it was the first vote I've ever cast in my life that I felt really, really counted for something. You know, most of the time, whichever buggers you vote into power, they're all the same, aren't they? They, they do the same thing. We've had this this hideous, grisly, Blairite consensus since even before the days of Tony Blair. We had, we had it under, under Tony Blair, we had it under John Major, we had it under um, Gordon Brown, we've had it under the grisly David Cameron, and we've got it now, of course, pretty much. Um, this was different, and it felt different not only because um, uh, it felt like we were going to make a real difference to what happened in the country, but also the people who voted on the different sides were, were not obviously left or right. I felt, for the, maybe the first time in my life, like I was a man of the people. I'm not saying I'm a horny-handed son at all myself, but the people I was with, the, the people of the north, the people of, 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 of the countryside, the people of the northern cities, the fisher folk, they were all united in wanting wanting this thing that I wanted. And the people who didn't want the thing I wanted were the kind of people that I rather, sorry to say this, but I rather despise. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about sort of corporate lawyers and, and, and bankers and, and quangocrats and people who work for Greenpeace and friends of the earth. Just, just in a way the new establishment, the new elite, because we know that the old elite doesn't exist anymore. You know, the country's no longer run by the Brigade of Guards and the, and the church and the aristocracy. It's run by these quangocrats and these these big corporations which love the EU because they can wear all the extra business costs that the EU uh, imposes on, on, on business. It's the smaller businesses which can't afford all this, this stuff. So it was a glorious moment. Um, and uh, yeah, it felt like we'd been given the keys to our prison doors and said, go ahead, now you, you, can, you can go out into the world and, and be free. And we'd just emerged, or we, I hope we're going to emerge, from a 40-year experiment, a 40-year failed experiment. Now, some of you won't have been taught this at school, in fact, most of you won't, but I think those of you who've read history, who are reading history might know about this, but there was a time, there have been times in history, when Britain was not actually part of a European socialist 
super state. We did actually have a period for quite a long time where we were, we were quite a significant power in the world. And we did really pretty well at it. So we were, we, for the last 40 years we've been trapped in, this, in this, this bizarre experiment. And we've had all the experts telling us, you cannot leave. It will be a disaster for you. It really will. Um, you know, uh, the sky will rain blood. Um, uh, the economy will, will collapse. No lesser figure than the Chancellor of the Exchequer uh, told us. Um, unemployment will rise, said the Confeder Confederation of British Industry. Uh, you will be pariahs on the world stage, said um, that woman with the wrong seal, uh, what's her name, Christine Lagarde. Um, third World War will break out, said the Prime Minister. Um, you'll be the back of the, at the back of the queue, said the President of the United States. And yet despite all these experts, who must know because they're experts, all these experts are somehow 17.4 million people in Britain said, no, nah, we'll take our chances, thanks, we're not going to listen to you. Why do you think that the people of Britain, the majority, 52%, why do you think they ignored all these experts? Well, there is one thing, which is that these people, 52%, these 17.4 million people, were low information voters. And it was very kind of um, Professor Sims not to uh, suggest that this was the case. He was, he was kind about, he wasn't going to give them, uh, accuse them of being stupid. But I know that some people did say that, didn't they? They said, they said that these were low information voters. Um, they hadn't been educated to quite the level of the people who voted for Remain. Um, so they were obviously too thick to know what was good for them, right? Um, or could it be perhaps these people weren't actually stupid? That they simply grasped something that people who read gender studies at um, the University of West of England didn't understand. <laughs> uh, they had maybe, may, had maybe something called good old-fashioned common sense. They thought to themselves, look, I don't hate Europe. I like Europe. I like going on holiday to Benidorm or wherever. Um, I like Paris, you know, but nothing against the French. You know, the nice, nice food, snails and stuff. It's all good. Italy, it's a great place. Um, but I also know that Europe is the, or was, the, the cradle of democracy. You know, it all started with the Greeks, didn't it? And then the Romans, and all came along. And it got better and better. But then suddenly, Europe invented this bizarre entity. Which was, which was not just undemocratic, but actually anti-democratic. How weird is that from the cradle of democracy? Suddenly mutating into this warped thing, where you've got five presidents, none of whom you can vote out of office. You've got 28 commissioners that you didn't vote for either. And these people are taking huge chunks of your money, I don't know whether it's 350 million or what, but it was quite a lot. Um, and they make all these new rules for you, and you've got no option to obey, for them, obey them, and you can't get rid of these bastards. They're there, whether you like them or not. Now, um, there are some people who like this kind of arrangement. People like... Um, Monsieur Macron, for example. Monsieur Macron clearly is very pro-EU. And Mr. Macron admitted the other day, he said, if you put it to the vote in France, I reckon most people would vote to get out of the EU. So did he say, well, obviously what we've got to do then is, is go to the people and give them their democratic uh, freedoms? He didn't say that. No, he said, well, I'm not going to give them the vote. Why is that? Well, because people like Monsieur Macron uh, are very happy. <laughs> anti-democratic entity. And I think there are lots of people in Britain who are, uh, in, in London particularly, in Westminster particularly, who are very happy with this anti-democratic entity because there are nice cushy jobs at the end of it. I mean, if you're a failed loser politician like, I don't know, Neil Kinnock, um, you, can, you can jump on the, the Euro gravy train and get a really nice sinecure for you and your wife and your, your son Stephen, probably, I don't know. Uh, it's a pretty good deal. Uh, I'm sorry, um, I don't like this arrangement. 
I mean, call me uh, an honorary peasant, I'm not a real peasant, obviously, but I feel like I am. I feel, on Brexit, I feel like I am one of the mob. I feel like I'm with John Ball, marching on, on London and confronting um, the mayor of London, and saying, this won't do anymore. Um, and uh, I'm proud to be part of this people's revolution. And I'm proud to be... Um, part of this revolution which seems to uh, inspire all sorts of people, not the people that I despise, the people currently running this kind of stitch up, this ghastly, well I mean the current government for example are, are the embodiment pretty much, I mean apart from a few receptions like, well Jacob Rees-Mogg isn't even in power is it? But if he were. Um, it was really nice being part, it, it, it feels good even now, to be part of this revolution against this entrenched, noisome elite. Um, and uh, I'd just like to close with the words of somebody I really admire. Uh, I admire him, by the way, I don't admire him at all, but he was right on some things. His name was Tony Benn. Um, and Tony Benn, just before the, the Maastricht uh, vote, which obviously carried us deeper into Europe. Uh, he was in a parliamentary debate and he said, some people genuinely believe that we shall never get social justice from the British government, but we will get it from Jacques Delors. <laughs> they believe that a good king is better than a bad parliament. I have never taken that view. He was talking about the importance of democracy of being able to vote out the bastards who are making your life miserable when they're making it miserable and keep them in power when they are doing good things. I am very proud to have voted for Brexit. I think it's going to be very good for Britain. I think it's going to be good for all of you. Some of you don't know it yet, but it is. Because democracy is a very precious thing. We've been fighting for it since the... Uh, the Battle of Salamis, and it, it's made us free. I think we should be happy about that and celebrate it, and I hope you will join me in rejecting this appalling, dismal, silly promotion. Thank you. This club that we, um, we were briefly members of. Um, the last time I was a member of a club that I decided to leave, I didn't get given the bill for the next two years. Fifty billion pounds. I, that's not how, how how clubs work. I very much appreciate the point the gentleman over there made about the kind of Britain that he would like to live in after if we leave the European Union. He said free, independent, self-governing. This sounds like the kind of place I would like to live in, and the kind of place I imagine you'd like to live in too. But I would concede to um, the proposers that this is not a given, this bright future ahead of us. It is entirely possible that we could, in ten years' time, find ourselves un under some kind of Corbynista tyranny, and perhaps to some of you who'd like to experience uh, the bracing effects of socialism. And those of you who want to vote for that, I would encourage you to do so, so that you can experience what it's like living in uh, a British version of Venezuela. I think you might find it very enlightening, good for your education. <laughs> that is the nature of democracy. You get the choice whether or not you want to have a future as a free, independent, self-governing country. For example, the kind of country I'd like would have low taxes, low regulation. We would be this, this freebooting, buccaneering country, striking incredible trade deals all over the world. The kind of trade deals that currently we are not, unable to do because we are stuck with the regulations of the single market and the customs unit. Union, which is, by the way, anti-trade. I don't know, it, it beggars belief that the, 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 the proposers of this motion can claim that 
Europe is about free trade. If it's about free trade, they have no problem cutting a deal with us now. We would happily say to the European Union, look, do you want to have a free debt trade deal? No problem, we're happy with that. But we are not able to do so because the European Union does not roll like that. It wants to punish us. Why does it want to punish us? Because it is a political entity, not a wonderful free market trading entity. It is the opposite of that. Let me come back to the fundamental point that we've been discussing this evening. This is the best answer for whether or not we should have stayed in the EU, and it always will be. It's about democracy. It's about, do you have the right to be able to vote in and out people who control your lives, or do you uh, hand over control of your life to people who you cannot boot out of office? It's really that simple. There is an argument, yes, that we should have this entity across the water in Brussels and Strasbourg where these people, these, 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 wise, these wise people that we can't control, they make the laws, they decide what is good for us. If you have no faith in your country, that's a very, very good model, let me say. But if you have a scintilla of belief in your country, in your people, then I think that the bare minimum that you would want out of any uh, government is one that you can boot out of office. You should be in control of them, not them in control of you. I want to read you something that one of the leading campaigners for the Remain said, Lord Kerr, uh, a, a, a crossbench grandee. He said, native Brits are so bloody stupid that we need an injection of intelligent people to help us run the country. That is not a view I take about the, the demos of Britain, the people of Britain. I think you're better than that, and I have faith in you. I have faith in your future outside the European Union. And once again, I urge you to oppose. Mm -hmm. <laughs>